welcome back to The Buzz, my in-studio guest, of course, former Lieutenant Governor uh, Kaleo Moylan, and now the uh, Chairman of the Guam Chamber of Commerce. We're talking political stratus. Now, um, this military buildup from the very beginning, we always said, how can, this, how can we work hand-in-hand hand to make this a good thing for Guam? Your view on this, because now that it's been protracted out, uh, we've heard, um, again, um, I guess allegations, we've heard this, that, uh, hey, they're not coming because of, of leaders basically talking it down, not, not wanting this buildup. Your, your estimate in, in, the, in this whole thing. Uh, well, m my estimate is that, you know, the people of Guam, mm -hmm. you know, support uh, this military but mm -hmm. there's a lot of good that will come with it naturally there are there are going to be some bumps in the road mm -hmm. w when you have a project of this magnitude in any community mm -hmm. but what is really needed is clear lines of communication mm -hmm. on uh, and expectations of both parties mm -hmm. uh, at the table you know what what does the federal government expect of us and what do we expect of them mm -hmm. uh, in return so those kind of dialogue uh, need to be occurring um, on a daily, weekly basis uh, with all parties involved, all the stakeholders. Uh, understanding where the infrastructure improvements need to be made, who's going to pay for mm -hmm. those infrastructure mm -hmm. improvements, mm -hmm. uh, so on and so forth. Uh, the the win-win situation is that when you have dialogue like that and you have issues that uh, concern the community, you can uh, mitigate them mm -hmm. in advance. Um, but waiting for something to explode doesn't do anybody any good, and there's a lot of finger pointing mm -hmm. going on. Mm -hmm. And then we end up in a situation where we're currently in right now, where there's assumptions that somehow this community mm -hmm. is responsible for the build up not occurring, and that's not true. It's, mm -hmm. it's a national budget issue. Mm -hmm. It's the issue between uh, uh, two parties mm -hmm. in Congress trying to control a runaway uh, uh, deficit. So um, that's an issue beyond us, um, and we need to proceed forward with mm -hmm. the plan that's being implemented on Guam. Uh, but we need to hear from the, the authorities that the plan is moving forward mm -hmm. and what do they expect. So I, I, that's clearly important at this yeah. point in time. Let's go to one of our callers. Let's go to Sarafino from Agad. Welcome to the buzz. Hey, buenas. Yes, uh, yes uh, I got this um, question right regarding, regarding the, uh, you know, um, having the military uh, pay some kind of uh, tax or toll for using our uh, highways out here. Since they're gonna be here for a while, uh, it'll be nice if we get something you know, uh, extra or in addition to them being here. So that's my concern. If, can, uh, is part of the buildup going, going to be also uh, involved uh, charging the military in the, uh, personnel in using our freeways and highways? That's it. Thank you very much. I, I guess this is in line with uh, Senator Guthrie's uh, toll, uh, toll booths. Well, I, I think that um, when we're talking about the, 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 uh, the aspect of the military buildup, the first thing that must occur is uh, how, how do we see the infrastructure uh, coming into play mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and how will it uh, be paid? Um, we have federal highway funds. Mm -hmm. uh, we receive federal funds, in which Go Guam and, and this community does not pay taxes mm -hmm, for, mm -hmm. right? It, uh, the taxes that we do pay uh, revert back to the general treasury sure, and so sure. the, the federal grants that we do receive uh, from Congress on an annual basis uh, support many of the infrastructure improvements currently underway mm -hmm. so taxing the military personnel for uh, infrastructure improvements uh, isn't um, uh, a, a viable uh, a request mm -hmm. I think that again when we're talking about how do we make this uh, this build up work mm -hmm. we need to talk about well what are your needs if you if we need to expand our highways and roadways you know, how much of that uh, should be in forms of federal grants, how much of that should be in low cost uh, loans uh, to the community, because we're all gonna benefit mm -hmm. at the end of the mm -hmm. day to the infrastructure improvements. If we build a, a super highway, as they've talked about in the past from, you know, after Harvard mm -hmm. to Anderson. That has so since been taken off the, well, right. off the. But, uh, you know, yeah. assuming, you know, we have these sure. kinds of sure. discussions, sure. you know, those improvements uh, benefit everybody at the end of the day. And, you know, you have water lines and sewer lines running through that uh, infrastructure mm -hmm. improvement mm -hmm. that uh, it better the, uh, the, mm -hmm. the properties uh, affected. So mm -hmm. that's a clear kind of communication that, uh, that needs to happen so that the proper planning mm -hmm. for the build-up occurs. You know, the, the build-up is going to provide opportunities in, in new jobs here and higher paying jobs. You know, that's the good part. The, the, the problem that the community is experiencing, and this should be a message for Congress, is you need to be clear in your message. You need to tell us exactly what 
uh, mm -hmm. you're intending to do here so that we can plan for it. Because if you don't, if you're not clear, then it raises the specter of speculation. Should, and yes, speculation right. mm -hmm. uh, leads to no good that's if, right. if, that's right. if not contained. And that has been part of the issue. Mm -hmm. the, the PR hasn't been very mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. So from that point of view, they need to come out and be more clear. And usually speculation is the first thing that gets axed in Congress anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Frank from Magani Heights. Frank, welcome to the buzz. Mr. Moylan, I, I was wondering, uh, do you have any information in regards to any negotiations uh, between the uh, federal government and the uh, Philippine uh, government uh, in, re uh, in regards to uh, reopening one of the, the closed down military uh, bases there? Clark, mm -hmm. should we be something like that? Okay, thank you. Uh, I have no personal knowledge except for what I've read and, and heard mm -hmm. that uh, that uh, two senators from the Senate have uh, have gone to uh, the Philippines to mm -hmm. investigate whether or not uh, moving uh, assets to the Philippines is a viable option. Uh, I still think uh, personally that Guam is the better option. Mm -hmm. It's a U.S. sovereign soil. Uh, I, I think that the Philippine government had kicked the U.S. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, out mm -hmm. uh, for a reason. I think that uh, for for that option to be on the table, you would have to see the U.S. State Department uh, go back and, and negotiate this uh, th this kind of plan, and that would merely stretch out or, and delay the movement, which I think uh, at this point in time isn't something that mm -hmm. Japan nor the U.S. want to see. And, and you're, you're going to get big resistance right. from their, their MPAs and, 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 and all that. And, yeah, and Guam sure. really is, yeah. is, uh, mm -hmm. has always been historically a, a great fallback position. We're, mm -hmm. we're strategically located uh, geographically. And uh, we, we offer, uh, not just Guam, but the Marianas, uh, offers a, a, a good position for the uh, military strategically. Mm -hmm. I still think that this is the, the best spot for it. And, um, and, and, and I think they do too. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, what we're asking for is basically to be in the negotiating table, be a part of the decision making from, from the very beginning. And, and that was the one, of the one of the things that really upset us in the fact that when, when we were in Okinawa, that they were negotiating our future and our leaders, and, and you were, of course, uh, uh, as the lieutenant governor, wait, wait a minute, you at least should be at the table. <laughs> well, you, you bring up a very good point, Jess, and for the community as a whole, you know, uh, the people of Guam, need a voice in Congress, a voting member in Congress. Mm -hmm. uh, without having a voting me member, mm -hmm. uh, you don't have someone championing the, mm -hmm. uh, the issues mm -hmm. for us. Uh, someone who can come out publicly and say, look, mm -hmm. this is what my colleagues are looking at. This is what, uh, where we'd like to go. Mm -hmm. uh, and someone who can re return back to Congress saying, this is what the people of Guam are feeling, and this is what uh, they see uh, as some of the issues that need to be addressed. That's important. Yeah, We're Americans, important. and yeah. so we need to be treated equally under the flag. That's right. And so that question that was asked uh, in 1901 in the insular cases, does the Constitution follow a flag? It should be answered yes. It, right. it was answered, I think, incorrectly, and it was given a a, uh, a new status, an unincorporated territory, territory right. Right. And, uh, which I think is unconstitutional. We're going to take a break, and we'll come back again more with uh, former Lieutenant Governor Kelly Moore. Be right back. <laughs> 